Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Thought Leaders. I'm your host, Chris Shang, and we are bringing in different leaders from various fields of expertise. Today, we have a human capital expert or HR expert, um, Albert Loyola. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Thank you, Grace. Uh, thanks for having me. Albert Loyola, Grace out of Dallas. I've been in management consulting for the last 13 years. My areas of expertise are workforce transformation and human capital. And throughout my consulting career, I wore different hats, all the way from practice strategy, ecosystems, alliances, and client delivery work, all in the context of working closely with the C-suite, HR, and business leader to plan, design, execute transformation of programs, including HR strategy, employee experience, M&A, culture transformation. Great. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, of course. Um you have a very extensive background. You worked for some, you know, really, really Fortune 100 companies, Fortune 50 companies even. And so can you share with us, uh, I mean, it looks like you, you've always been in some shape or form involved in like talent development, transformation, you know, this idea of, of, of building out uh, the teams within organizations and then helping them evolve internally. But how did you get involved with it in the first place? Um you know, what was that curiosity? What was it about you in terms of like, you know, your youth and then evolution as a professional that connected the dots and, and this became your calling as a, as a career? Yes, great, great question. So probably I will need to take the audience to 13 years back in my career. Uh, back in the time I was working in the oil and gas business. So one of the things that I was I was executing there was trying to figure out how can we define new predictive analytics around talent to enable operational excellence in oil and gas. And as I was doing that kind of work, I, I remember that my, my CEO called me and said, hey, come to my office, we need to talk. So the first thing that came to mind, I was like, oh my God, I'm in trouble, I'm gonna be fired. Long story short, he asked me to, uh, hey Albert, I'm hiring um, a consultant firm and they are bringing data scientists to help me to improve rig operations. Mm -hmm. So uh, my first reaction was what a data scientist is and what exactly they will do. So think about, Chris, that 10 years, 13, 12 years ago, a data scientist role was brand new. So the, the thing is that I had the opportunity to be exposed to the way how they analyze that data. How do they manage data? How do they start thinking about predicting analytics? So then I was just thinking as I was working with them is, why don't we bring this to human capital? And that was my aha moment. And I started thinking about what's the impact around AI and how can you define new experiences? How can you start thinking about new ways to define HR service delivery and use AI driven technology to enable different moments that matter, that matter across the time I speak. So that, that was the connection. And then it seems like I did a good job because that consultant firm hired me. And then I started my journey in the human capital space. Started off doing the workforce transformation and talent strategy, and then making the connection to employee experience. And as we define ex employee experience powered by technology, I start thinking about what is the future looking HR strategy to enable these new capabilities in the marketplace. Mm, interesting. Interesting. Okay. Um, so it started off with kind of like that first early on experience and then um, bringing this data scientist and, and maybe can you walk us through then like how that was like to maybe change the perspective of like how you looked at human capital, right? Which is almost like at that point, you're now starting to quantify, you're starting to quantify skill sets and outputs of, 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 of individual performances, right? As part of your evaluation process. Uh, and and scaling teams, like was that an epiphany moment? Like, at, at, at how do you, like how did you wrap your head around it to then incorporate that? I guess like as part of more of you know your your overarching philosophy on 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 human capital. So three main components to highlight: experience, process, and governance. So let's start off with the first one. So if you think about experience end-to-end -end when it comes to employee journeys, back in the time, technology was very limited when it comes to creating engaging and consumer-grade experiences, right? Data was all over the place, multiple data sources. And maybe we still have that, but 
now Gen AI is changing the entire landscape, and we are going to talk about that in two seconds. So with that in mind, back in the time, it was very hard for, for AI to be able to manage and be able to combine those data sources to enable specific use cases and, and provide analytics to leadership, whether it's to improve operations, whether it's to reduce costs or enable user experience. It was very hard to connect those capabilities with the human side of the house. As technology was evolving in the last 13 years, then we saw the first wave of, of technology around AI. If you remember, Chris, we have the first chatbot solutions. They were very clunky and they were just focusing on candidate experience. They were able to provide some frequently asked questions, be able to answer those questions. And it was just the beginning of AI, right? And then we evolved that and we, we hit the pandemic and then all these systems that were related to collaboration, be able to create personalized learning experiences. And then all of a sudden we have LXP systems, we have new technology around collaboration and be able to have better understanding of productivity of our employees. How do they work? When do they work? And then all of a sudden we jump into internal mobility, be able to combine performance with learning and skill data to start creating some learning pathways and mobility. All of a sudden, we arrived to November 2022 when OpenAI disrupted the market with ChatGPT. Mm -hmm. That was a transformational moment, not only for enterprises, but also for HR, right? You start thinking about how are you going to redefine your new capabilities? How are you going to be able to redefine a future-looking employee experience and the HR technology stack in order to enable those consumer-grade journeys, right? Obviously, this is something that needs to be powered by new capabilities. So, for example, define a data strategy, which is a critical component for AI to work. If you don't have a data strategy end-to-end, -end, be able to define the way how you're going to ingest the data, be able to manage it, curate it, you know, make the adjustments and updates, then it will be very hard for data scientists to enable those machine learning cases uh, and have the information ready for, for prime time. So there has been an evolution of this, right? It, it, many early adopters started testing with the chatbots 10 years ago, and now they are one of the you know, leading HR organizations that are ready for, for, for AI, be able to have data scientists in their teams and start thinking about um, intelligence when it, when it comes to using AI to make predictive analytics. Interesting, okay. Um... So you talked a lot about, I think, some of the stuff that we are dealing with and seeing right now, right? I think um, you leveraging AI in terms of being able to, at, at in almost like in real time, do these analyses. Um, so where do you feel like what what is that shift now that you're seeing in terms of um, how the human capital role or HR role is now evolving in the sense that uh, a skill that what is the skill set where where are the skill sets that have changed in the past couple of years with gen ai now right like what do what do hr leaders have to start thinking about and preparing for or learning in order for them to adapt and be agile enough to uh, adjust to this change in real time does that make sense um yes Yes, skills, I feel like it's a different skill set than you would be asking for an HR leader from about three years ago, four years ago. It's 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 very different. Um, even just the analysis part, like the speed of what you're able to get data back now is different. And so I feel like even it, you may have been a great uh, somebody great at analyzing in the past, but now it's like the speed of analyzing and can in, in in tandem with it, um, and then be able to make quick changes or adjustments on the fly? So there are, I would say, generally speaking, three main areas where HR leaders are going to start shifting their mindset and, and in order to the, define and develop value around HR and talent. Okay. Number one is, is because of AI, specifically on generative AI, they need to figure out who are the new relationship when it comes to work and digital workers. Like what is the future of work? What are the new roles that we need? And what's going to be the role of, of these new technologies and interaction with humans? So that's number one. Number two is, is what's going to be the, the impact around the workplace? What are going to be the new trends around um, remote work? 
So we want to be able to define those specific guardrails around safety and, and data standards to make sure that our employees um, interact and experience safely with, with Gen AI, right? And lastly, start thinking about the impact around talent and experiences. So what's our plan to, to make sure that we upskill, new skill or reskill our talent and be able to define a clear learning pathways based off these persona journeys that can quickly help us to understand what are the skill gaps, what are the future skills that Albert might need, Chris might need, what is, are the potential opportunities when it comes to learning pathways adjacent skills so that they can both be successful in their careers. So that involves up, you know, new, these new capabilities involve for HR to start thinking about what is gonna be number one, my new strategy when it comes to service delivery. Number two, what is the way that I need to be organized, operating model or design? And number three, what are the planning and HR practices that I need to put in place to help and enable the business? Interesting, okay. Um, and when you think about like, um, and when you think about all that, I, I think that how do you, com I think the other part of it is like, how do you communicate those learnings to the rest of the organization, right? Like how do you, how do you get the buy-in from the rest of the organization that this is directionally how we need to start looking at talent and how we can start scaling this effectively to reach to an outcome or a common goal um, where there is now a quantifiable metric around it? So a couple of thoughts for discussion. So in, in the past, when HR raised the hand to implement a system, it was more about Hey, I need an HR system so that I can organize our, our talent data, but with minimum visibility when it comes to connection of that talent data with business and outcomes. So leaders knew that they needed to have some sort of a system to organize and have those data sources and a central place where they can have access to, to talent data. But now the story is, is different because now the messaging to the CEO and the C-suite, it's around A, I have this new technology that will allow me to predict if you are going, for example, to a new market, tell this team, which is the kind of talent and skills that we need. But in addition to that, I can give us information around workforce and skills overall. So the messaging is changing because you are connecting talent with business value, which is something that was a challenge in the past. Yeah. So with, with that in mind, then the next question is, all right, Albert, you got a point, you have a capability that we didn't have before, but now let's talk about what is the business case and the potential impact. And I'm talking about what is the business value of AI for any specific business cases or, or use cases that you wanna prioritize to enable the business. And that's the beauty of it, because you can have a, a clear compelling story when it comes to where exactly you wanna use AI to enable the business, but then you need to prove it through a business case. So that's where you jump into the discussions with those leaders across HR and business and start thinking about which are the specific use cases that we want to prioritize that will have a short, long-term impact around business, cost, user experience, employee experience, or revenue growth. So you do that analysis so that you can show to the leadership team here are the potential impacts if we make investments around talent, HR, and technology. So that's number one, right? Create that business case and, and enable that business case. Number, the second section is technology is an enabler. What you need to make sure is that you have a culture around AI so that your leaders and managers are the ones that become the sponsors and show the new ways of working. The one that guide the team when it comes to, hey, you feel comfortable interacting and experiencing with AI. There is not going to be any, you know, punishment. They have to be the one providing that support so that then they can define what is going to be the enterprise end-to-end -end strategy and scale. So huge, huge role on these implementations of bringing this new technology is, is on, on leadership, a manager, a manager enablement. Got it. Um... And I guess like my next question, because you're talking about a lot of AI uh, related, you know, um, related, I think like 
interwoven into 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 the into the space and um how much of this of what you're saying has been do you feel like like what percentage of this has been fully adopted across organizations or is this more of like what you're foreseeing of like how it's going to be adopted across organizations and then that's that's one question the other question would just be then with change i feel like um I, obviously i think with senior leadership change can be expedited with those business use cases or those business examples where if it's a very tangible outcome or roi like it's a lot easier to move things along but um but similarly like you almost have to like lay out i feel uh these a course of how to make those corrections or make those changes and how do you get the buy in psychologically maybe from those senior leadership to to then make those changes as needed uh, because i feel like again this is like in theory a lot of these things have totally make sense but have you seen this in practice um where you know there's been examples of this where it's 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 um it's proven itself out yeah great great question so we are in the i would say based on my my conversations with senior leaders companies are in the in the stage of experimenting with ai Mm -hmm. They are still trying to figure out what exactly are going to be my my prioritized use cases. Yep. So what I'm going to spend time is to be able to allow my employees to experiment with this new technology, but also allow my teams to have better understanding of how exactly they are using this technology in their day-to-day -day job and what is going to be the potential impact around my business. We, with that said, there are some organizations that are moving the needle forward and start thinking about, we need to spend now more time to start educating our boards, our C-suite, our leaders on what exactly is AI and what's going to be the impact in our business, and start discussing which are the specific use cases and the strategy in order to bring it to life. Um, and what I mean by that is typically I've, I've seen companies focusing on three main areas, supply chain, user experience and um, process and innovation. HR is not the priority. However, the ones that are focusing on HR as one of the use cases, they look for the small or the first signature win, if you win, to prove the value and get the buy-in. So they find a specific problem that they want to solve. Let's say candidate experience. What exactly the technology will enable or support, whether it's a digital work it, or is creating new content, or is making recommendations, and then quickly see what's going to be the impact, whether for, for the business or the employer or user experience. That's how many companies are moving the needle and start thinking around, all right, well, let's start small. Let's build those signature wins. Let's learn from those mistakes, and then we can scale. Got it. And, okay, and... um. Okay, and so I guess like, is there ways? I get, I get. What are some of those what those those experiments or those tests that are happening? Because I think like, you know, I, I just think about the way that any change is is elicited is through baby steps and through these, uh, maybe like quick wins, right, or or something that you can realize fairly quickly. Um, what are some of those exercises or that you've seen that? Can that's like maybe you know the first few steps that is part of like the larger scale plan um, that you found people like if you're coming into an organization and you're doing an audit and you're like okay we need to adjust these things what are the first like one or two action items that you're you're probably going to be uh, implementing or executing on to get the ball rolling? I I think depending of the level of maturity when it comes to HR practices every client is different. But I will say many clients are spending time to redefine talent acquisition, number one, specifically on, on the candidate, candidate experience, and start thinking about how can they make it more, more digital, but also at the same time help the recruiter to be more effective in their day-to-day -day job, right? So, for example, think about the 8 to 6 p.m. work for any recruiter. Typically, they are reviewing the job descriptions and then drop those job descriptions all the way to validation, interview, scheduling all the way to onboarding. Now we have a set of technology that is able to 
take some of those activities and help the recruiter to make a, a decision faster and be more productive. So for example, now you have technology that I can tell you, hey, this is the market where you can find the talent. These are the potential skills that many companies are looking for. And based on that, here are the potential candidates that you should consider based on the information that you have in your ATN systems or HCM systems, but also based on the requirements that you mentioned in the job description. So that is saving a lot of time for the recruiter because now instead of just look for those candidates, then the technology is able to tell, hey, here is there are the potential candidates making the recommendation capability that I mentioned before. Here are the potential candidates for you to review and then allow the recruiter to make the final decision and say, here are the ones that I want to interview. Yeah. In addition to that, then you have also a scheduling technology, right? Then after the, the, the recruiter is interviewed, and then you have an automated system that quickly connect with the candidate and say, hey, here are some updates on the job that you, you apply. Here are the potential options when it comes to interviewing and just keep informing the candidate in their candidate experience end to end. But those are some of the things that I've seen um, common in recruit. I can continue with more examples. Same with, with learning experience and internal mobility. Definitely one of the components that is growing exponentially is skills intelligence. The, the reason why is because with Gen AI now, you can combine multiple use cases. So think about like the data that is sitting in talent acquisition. You have data sitting in performance and, and in learning and, and mobility. So now you can tell the system, well, we are going to get there, not yet, but tell the system, hey, I'm looking for a candidate with these specific requirements. Then can you please help me to identify which are the ones that I should consider, whether it's for you know, for promotion or is, is ready to move or what are the skills that I need to consider so that I can create my talent pool. Then the system will go through all these, these different data sources and come up and make a recommendation. Interesting. Um... So I think what we talked, what you what you just kind of covered there, um, definitely discusses the top part of the funnel of talent acquisition. I think like when I think about then talent retention, right, or our, our talent churn, um, has any of these things been realized where it's improving retention numbers or or performance numbers? And what are what are and does that have any effect then in terms of like the different metrics of what success is being measured against for employees? Um, I, I I mean, I think about it because there's a lot of, I mean, there's, there's a lot of, I feel like intangible skill sets that nowadays we're trying to look for out of candidates. Um, soft skills, interpersonal skills that may or may not show up on some of these um uh, some of these requirements or like maybe like you know they're they're tangible in, in inputs and outputs but there's some of these things that you know we're we're looking for in in a candidate i'm thinking from like my perspective of like when i've earlier stage trying to hire you know a, a somebody in the sales realm and trying to discern somebody that is like that hustler self motivated individual that will figure out things and learn things on their own versus somebody that needs the process, they need the playbook of things for them to be successful. And those are very difficult things to quantify, um, at least historically, and, and even like how then we measure them. Like if they're a certain personality type, we would probably measure them differently or choose, yeah, yeah the, the outcomes would be different based because the way that they're learning, the way that they are, um, yeah, I almost feel like, you know, that that goes to maybe also into culture of how you build that out. But any thoughts around around that? I know it's a it's a pretty extensive question. So let me let me give you an example. Yeah. So a couple of years back, I was working uh, with a client that was going through an M a activity. And a key component was around culture, be able to understand and merge one brand new culture between these two giant clients. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that was critical for the success of that M&A and bring to life a new culture was to be able to understand how employees felt about the activities that the company was executing and driving. So in that particular example, we use some technology around AI to quickly tell us a home 
how our employees feel about it. So employee listening, that's what I'm referring to. Be able to understand how people feel about the, you know, the whole integration, who we're interacting with, who, what are the main concerns, uh, what are the challenges that many teams were experiencing as they were going through the integration. So that information was analyzed by, by HR and the C-suite so that they can make adjustments to the integration plan. So that definitely was uh, a key important component as they were shaping their new culture and strategy, be able to understand how employees feel, how do they work, where do they feel that they need more support, whether it was from processes, technology, leadership, or, or culture overall. So that was something where we were able to combine how can you use this new technology to enable culture so that the company can meet those revenue targets that they committed to the board? Got it. Okay. I see. That makes sense. Um, and then the next thing I would, oh, I'm sorry, we're almost up on time real quick, but I guess like the next thing would be you outlined a lot of, I think, really great thoughts um, as to where the direction of, uh, of HR and, and human capital is going towards, you know, in the next six months to a year um, with the advent of some of these new technologies. <clears throat> but what do you think is like, right, like in today's market and, and environment, what are the things that's kind of keeping you up at night? Like, what are you thinking about? What are you, what are you seeing that other leaders are going through right now? That's really like a big priority presently. Um, what are they struggling with? So I, I think the, the first one to start off is how do they translate the, the hype into a tactical executional plan, right? Because right now everybody's talking about Gen AI, but one thing is is putting together a POV. Yeah. And another thing is to be able to translate that POV into a consulting right. strategy work, right? And I'm just using consulting words because that's that's my background. Um. But it, it applies the same for if you are a, a HR leader, right? So how do we translate that hype? And having multiple vendors saying that I have the right capabilities to solve any problem across the time life cycle, how do I make the decision? How I'm a strategic, but also executional in order to bring that capability to enable the employee experience. So number one is, is to be able to to balance the expectations of that technology and to my previous point, be able to define a clear plan for execution. So for, for that to bring into life, as, as discussed, we need to be clear on the problem that we're solving, the value that we're bringing, and what are the additional capabilities that I need to put in place in order to be successful. For example, data strategy. Another component is a change management enterprise that you need to put in place because at the end, Technology is all about adoption, yeah. which brings me to this, the second topic. Everybody talks about AI and Gen AI and the value, but at the end of the day, the ones that are going to use and are going to leverage that technology are going to be the workforce. And in order for the workforce to embrace and feel comfortable using this new technology, you need to define a clear plan when it comes to adoption and enablement. And with that in mind, leaders play a huge role and managers as well to make people safe. The psychological safety, the role modeling are critical for people to feel like, all right, I can start you know, using this technology for productivity. And also I can raise my hand if I feel like something is not right when it comes to the new solutions that we're bringing to, to help employees. And lastly, but not least is, because we see multiple vendors shifting their services and, and, and offerings, they are all looking to find the ways to be competitive and, and in the process of integrating Gen AI, specifically on large language models, right? But then the, the question is, you as a HR leader, what are the specific governance that you're going to put around AI? Because Productivity is just the tip of the iceberg. You're going to see Gen AI enabling multiple use cases and combining those use cases across the talent life cycle. So how do, are you going to govern? How are you going to manage this new technology that is, that is going to work closely with your workforce? You need to define a clear governance to make sure that any system that you're bringing to your organization is bias-free, you know, is explainable, 
it has some level of, of strong levels of robustness, right? And be able to maintain high levels of data privacy. So those are the things that I always thinking, hey, every time we define that strategy, what's gonna be my governance? What's gonna be the guardrails around, around safety and data privacy? But also what is the way how we're gonna go from a strategy to execution and bring value? Got it, got it, very cool. Um... Awesome. Very, very great stuff. Uh, on that note, I, will, I, want, I think we'll end it there. I think you just shared quite a bit of insight and, and a lot of expertise and how, you know, how leaders are now going to be able to take some of this information and what they're prioritizing and what they're thinking about. Um, and so I want to say thank you so much for taking the time today and sharing your wealth of knowledge. It was very insightful, very thoughtful. Um, and I think it's a, it's a lot to be learned. Thank you. I appreciate the time, Chris. Of course. Thank you, Albert.